I wish to remind the House that in accordance with the provision of Standing Order 232-3, the CC member shall be heard in silence without question or clarification sought, and thereafter the House will stand adjourned. Further, the provisions of the County Assembly Powers and Privileges Act 2017 shall apply to the CEC member during this, this sitting session. Honorable members, I now invite the CEC member for finance and the economic planning to make a public pronouncement on the budget policy highlights and revenue raising measures for the county government for the financial year 2023-2024. The CEC member for finance and economic planning, Mr. Karich, you may now proceed. Thank you. Mr. Speaker, it is indeed a great privilege to present to this Honorable Assembly the people of Nairobi and Kenyans at large the budget highlights and revenue raising measures for the financial year 2023-2024. This is in fulfillment of the provisions of Section 132.1 of the Public Finance Management Act 2012 and premised on Article 201 of the Constitution of Kenya 2010 on the principles of public finance, which among others decree that management of public resources shall be done within the realm of openness, accountability, public in involvement, equitable society, prudent use of public resources, and clarity in financial reporting. Mr. Speaker, this being the first budget following the conclusion of the general elections, held in August 2022. Allow me to congratulate all honorable members who are re-elected and those who are serving for the first time in the Third Assembly. I look forward to working with you closely uh, in promoting uh, county economic recovery for inclusive growth of Nairobians and Kenyans at large. Mr. Speaker, allow me to take this opportunity to express my deep appreciation to His Excellency the Governor for appointing me as the CEC for Finance and Economic Affairs and entrusting me with the privilege of overseeing the management of fiscal policy and the public financial management of the county. I also wish to extend my sincere gratitude to the county executive and the assembly for the wise counsel during the preparation of these budget policy highlights and revenue raising measures that will lay a strong foundation for our socio-economic transformation. Mr. Speaker, before presenting the fiscal and revenue framework, let me start by highlighting the economic context in which this budget has been prepared. Mr. Speaker, during the financial year 2022-2023, both the domestic and global economic environment recovery has been slow therefore impacting on service delivery and threatening the survival of many businesses. This impacted negatively on performance of own source revenue. This effect affected service delivery due to the emergent resource constraints. I shall now move on to the policy priorities and the economic outlook in the medium term. Mr. Speaker, Nairobi City County operates within the global and national macroeconomic framework, thus directly and indirectly influencing the county's fiscal decisions and operations. 
the global dynamics impacted the grants and loans that are targeted at supporting counties. Unstable global economic performance also resulted in the lower national GDP growth that trickled down to county levels. And this calls for county to explore alternative financing for its developmental programs such as enhancing PPP and sourcing of grants. The real interest rates reflected the real cost of borrowing, savings and return on investment for both the county government and Nairobi business communities. Mr. Speaker, despite the challenges, both the global and the domestic economy are projected to be on a growth path in 2023. We remain optimistic that the growth trajectory is expected to translate to better outcomes to the economy of the county in terms of uptake of our service, translating to increased revenue and increased fiscal space. Mr. Speaker, the budget estimates for the financial year 2023-2024 submitted to the County Assembly on um, this day seek to entrench institution transformation for better efficiency and effectiveness in service delivery, as well as bring the county and its residents to a path of recovery through entrenching the new county government's mission of order, dignity, hope, and opportunity for all. Additionally, we are beginning to implement the new CIDP 2023 to 2027. We are committed to achieve development goals by actualizing our motto, let's make Nairobi work. Honorable Speaker, the economic growth strategy underlying the budget for the next financial year and the medium term includes, one, increased on-source revenue mobilization, two, time, timely payment of bills to ensure debt sustainability, three, Effective implementation of the development initiatives. Four, effective implementation of the various county restructuring strategies and enhancing accountability by officers. And five, support for the private sector by reducing the cost of doing business. Honorable Speaker, to support the above growth strategies, the administration will be focusing funding and efforts towards the following key areas. One, to reverse negative trend on on-source revenue, the Nairobi Revenue Act 2021 will be implemented starting with the institutionalization of the Nairobi City County Revenue Authority. Number two, over-reliance on on-source revenue and exchequer re releases has tethered the county to underfunding and underperformance. The administration will pursue a radical shift in other sourcing of funding such as grants, donations, and public-private uh, public uh, partnership. Uh, thank you, uh, Commissioner Mama Network. To support this, the administration has come up with a directorate to coordinate the efforts. Three, the county treasury will be enforcing the fiscal responsibility as stipulated in the Public Finance Management Act, Section 107. This will bring sanity in funds appropriation and expedite control, and expenditure control, I beg your pardon. Number four, despite meeting the provisions of section 107.2b of the PFM Act 2012, the county has not been able to honor its obligation towards development. The only solution to this is to ring fence the allocations towards development. With the reduction of non-essential recurrent expenditure, and increasing county revenue to accommodate non-discretionary expenditure. And five, the administration will be reducing the cost of doing business by actively implementing the unified business permit and implementing the Trade Licensing Act. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, in seeking to achieve our medium term priorities, and in fulfillment of the requirements under the constitution of public participation, we accorded Nairobians the opportunity to share their views on issues that needed to be addressed in this budget. Mr. Speaker, we received many useful proposals and suggestions that have informed the priorities outlined in this budget statement. Broadly, these challenges were infrastructural, socioeconomic, and other emerging challenges 
which proved even more complex to handle. However, Rome was not built in one day, and the government remains committed to ensuring concerns of all residents are addressed. Mr. Speaker, infrastructural development has not been commensurate to the rapid growth demands. The population growth in Nairobi City is on an upward trend. Demand for water and sewage far outstrips supply. Traffic congestion continues to bedevil the city, sprouting of slums coupled with high levels of inequality, intermittent flooding and insecurity have been an ever persistent concoction of challenges encountered by Nairobi, consequently hampering the achievement of our medium-term development targets. Mr. Speaker, in our quest to be globally competitive, we have continuously remained committed to overcome these challenges and a lot of efforts and resources have already been invested towards this end. In the medium term, infrastructural development has remained a key investment area of the county where new roads have been constructed and existing ones maintained, non-motorized transport systems built, public transport expanded and improved, daily waste management of 3,000 tons achieved, beautification of our city and improvement of our public parks done, affordable housing projects continue, fire stations and uh, equipment installed, market and modern kiosks built, huge investments in the health sector for maintenance and construction of health facilities done, quality basic education provided, transition rates to school-going children improved, construction of school feeding kitchens began, and our vocational training centers improved. Mr. Speaker, on uh, support for affordable housing, the county government has continued to redevelop county rental houses to support the development of affordable housing for the Nairobi residents. Two projects are ongoing under phase one, Pangani with a total uh, of 1562 units and Jivanji with a total of 1830 units, while another seven projects have, are under procurement for phase two and are expected to deliver 14,000 units. These include Woodley, with 1,700 units, Kariobangi North, 1,000 units, Bahati, 3,000 units, Ziwani, 2,500 units, Maringo, 2,000 units, and Jericho, 4,000 units. Other phases will be identified after phase two commences. Mr. Speaker, the county has also embarked on renovation of county rental houses not earmarked for redevelopment in the near future. We have therefore witnessed renovation of flats in Buruburu Jamhuri, Kariobangi North, Huruma, and Uhuru Estates. These renovations will continue to ensure that tenants living in county-owned houses live in conducive environments. Mr. Speaker, the World Bank through the State Department of Housing and Urban Development is also currently supporting NCCG in upgrading informal settlements through planning, tenure regularization, and infrastructure upgrading. Settlements that will receive immediate infrastructure support in 2023-2024 are Kayole Soweto, Kahawa Soweto, Embakasi, and Kambi Moto. 400 million shillings will be disbursed in financial year 2023-2024. NCCG has set aside 10% as the mandatory counter counterpart contribution. On institutional reforms and support recovery, Mr. Speaker, while we celebrate the achievements made so far, we are aware that a lot remains to be done in order to conclusively deal with the pressing socioeconomic challenges, first, to reverse the effects of recent past negative shocks, and second, to improve and accelerate the betterment of the livelihoods of Nairobians. Consistent with this goal, the government will scale up implementation of policy priorities and structural reforms outlined in the County Fiscal Strategy Paper 2023. The strategy will involve increasing investment in health, infrastructure, education, and environment management. Mr. Speaker, the county has made steady progress since the onset of devolution in improving the business environment and improving efficiency and accountability. Notably, the county has continued to use integrated financial management system, that is IFMIS, 
in the management of expenditure, thus enhancing accountability in the management of public resources. Leveraging on ICT, the county will be undertaking reforms to enhance the revenue administration procurement through the implementation of an enterprise resource program, ERP, that is intended to ensure full integration of all subsystems. The planned ERP platform is expected to maximize revenue collection and halt perennial outsourcing of revenue collection services, thus helping on reducing the cost of collection. On pending bills, Mr. Speaker, pending bills have accumulated to an astronomical level and over many years. Statutory debts, which date back to more than 10 years, have affected the welfare of our retirees, who should be enjoying their sunset years after working hard for Nairobians. This has also affected service delivery. Mr. Speaker, the delay in payment of these pending bills has led to serious economic and social disruptions, as most service providers suffered financially. In addition, Allocation of resources towards debt resolution constrains our fiscal space. The supplementary budget for 2022-2023 accommodated quite a number of pending bills owed to suppliers and contractors who were cleared for payment by the internal audit team. In effect, by the end of the financial year, the government expects to have cleared majority of pending bills owed to suppliers and contractors. To further check the growth of pending bills in the coming financial year and comply with the National Government Directive, the County Treasury will roll out expenditure management policies and sectors will be required to ensure all their pending bills are fully cleared before the closure of every financial year. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, I will move on to the fiscal framework for the financial year 2023-2024. Mr. Speaker, over the years, the county has continued to experience fiscal deficit due to the underperformance of on-source revenue. The fiscal policy to support the estimates for financial year 2023-2024 is aimed at reversing this trend by focusing on revenue mobilization of on-source revenues. To this end, the county established the Nairobi City County Revenue Authority in order to address the structural and administrative reforms necessary to achieve revenue targets. The county also introduced a digital pay platform in January 2023, where Nairobians are conveniently able to pay for the services at the comfort of their location. On expenditure, the county will undertake reforms to enhance prudent management of the available resources in order to reduce expenditure of non-co activities and create space for development expenditures. I will now move to revenue and expenditure projections for the financial year. Mr. Speaker, the total revenue projections for the financial year 2023-2024, including both national government transfer grants and own source revenue, amounts to 42 0.3 billion shillings. Out of this, the projected national transfers amount to 21.3 billion, grants shillings 1.2 billion, while the total projected on source revenues amount to 19.9 billion shillings. Mr. Speaker, the total projected expenditure amounts to 42.3 billion shillings, made up of both recurrent and development expenditures at 28.3 billion and 14 billion respectively. The allocation of development is equivalent to 33% of the total budget, which is in line with section 107 of the Public Finance Management Act of 2012 that requires that at least 30% be allocated to development. Mr. Speaker, the revenue and expenditure projections are in accordance with the approved budget ceilings in the approved county fiscal strategy paper 2023. Mr. Speaker, allow me to highlight the budget details for the financial year 2023-2024 as tabled before this House. As aforementioned, the, uh, the driving theme for the budget is to transform our institution and its processes 
and strategically redirect the county and its people to economic recovery. The county budget for financial year 2023-2024 stands at 42.3 billion. Mr. Speaker, in order to bring services closer to the residents, I have allocated 400 million shillings for construction of borough offices, sub-county and ward offices. The boroughs will be the focal point for planning and will provide a one-stop shop where the residents can access all the services offered by the Nairobi City County. This will ultimately reduce the time taken for Nairobians to get services and ultimately the cost of doing business. In the recent past, we have witnessed destruction of property due to fire. I will also be requesting that this House approves 120 million shillings towards construction of fire stations in Kangemi and Gikomba. <laughs> On the ward development program, Mr. Speaker, the ward development program, WDF, is aimed at reducing disparities in resource allocation and development across all wards. The impact of the program has been felt all over Nairobi. However, the implementation of ward programs has been faced with various obstacles, leading to delayed implementation of projects and therefore denying Nairobians the much needed services. The county treasury has embarked on payment of completed certificates, paving way for a seamless implementation of WDF projects in the coming financial year. Mr. Speaker, the projects to be implemented under this program will be ward-based, depending on the priority of the individual wards. The proposal from wards are development-oriented, mostly in infrastructure development. I have proposed an allocation of 1.95 billion as allocation in the budget to WDF. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, implementation of various programs and projects will require an efficient procurement system. To this end, and in line with the government policy on e-procurement, the county will undertake implementation of e-procurement in line with the national government policy. This will not only enhance efficiency, but also ensure the county gets the best services at the best prices possible due to increased competition. Mr. Speaker, in an effort to achieve universal quality health care during the financial year 2022-2023, uh, ICU, renal unit and satellite blood banks were opened in Mamalusi Kibaki Hospital. Repairs, rehabilitation, and equipping of various medical facilities were implemented. To continue with the spirit of affordable healthcare, I have allocated 400 million shillings for equipping and stocking of sufficient drugs and pharmaceutical items to the county health facilities. I have also allocated Kenya shillings, 1.1 billion for construction equipping and rehabilitation of health facilities. <laughs> Ensuring affordable health services are accessible to all remains our key priority. Mr. Speaker, on the school feeding program, to take care of the school-going children in Nairobi, I have allocated 1.2 billion shillings in the current budget for public primary schools and ECD centers feeding and 500 million shillings in development for construction of kitchens and serving sheds. This program will improve the nutritional status of the learners and also encourage students to attend school, leading to an increase in enrollment, performance and transition to higher levels of education. The county has targeted to feed about 250,000 children. Mr. Speaker, on investing in infrastructure development, the priority area for this sector will be to enhance pedestrian safety and connectivity through construction and rehabilitation of roads, street lighting, stormwater drainage, and bridges. Completion of ongoing roadworks will be targeted as a key priority 
together with the rehabilitation of already completed works. I have allocated 2.6 billion shillings to facilitate the implementation of the development projects in the sector. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, in order to enhance access to education and to support the national government effort to ensure 100% transition to secondary schools, the county government has been providing support to the needy students through the provision of bursaries. The county is continuing with this endeavor, and in this regard, I have allocated 857 million for provision of bursaries to the needy students. Out of this, 7 million will be allocated to every ward and the balance will be available to sponsor all continuing students under the executive scholarship program. Mr. Speaker, in order to develop talent among the youth, I have further allocated 554 million for the construction and re rehabilitation of stadia, which serve as recreation centers for our youth. Mr. Speaker, in order to create an enabling environment for traders and investors, I have allocated 730 million for construction of various markets within the county and 100 million shillings for, reallocation, for relocation of informal traders from main streets to maintain order dignity in the streets of Nairobi. Mr. Speaker, supply of water remains a constitutional right to the public, and management of sewer is an unavoidable responsibility. Management of solid waste and sewage is a challenge we continuously seek to overcome. We have procured 27 tippers, 10 skip loaders, 24 refuse compactors, 3 bulldozers, 4 backhaul trucks, as well as increased human capital by uh, employing 3,000 support staff to undertake cleaning in the city. We are therefore planning to increase the daily waste management to 3,200 tons per day. Mr. Speaker, for beautification and greening of Nairobi, we planted 365,000 trees, 38,000 flowers, installed 11 air quality monitors in financial year 2022-2023. We have programmed to plant an additional 1 million trees Continue with beautification of parks, complete construction of Uhuru Park, Jivanji, and dump site Waybridge, as well as install litter bins in the city. Mr. Speaker, in order to enhance food security among Nairobians, the county government is taking deliberate measures to improve, to improve food production through promotion of urban farming across the whole value chain. These measures include provision of extension services and training of the youth on modern farming methods. Towards this, I have allocated the food and agriculture sector 123.9 million for the installation of greenhouses, water harvesting tanks, vertical vegetable gardens, and promotion of broiler farming. On the county assembly, Mr. Speaker, the county assembly plays an important role in all legislative functions within the county, including approval of county laws, policies, budgets, and expenditure, integrated development plans, tariffs, rates, and service charges, as well as playing an oversight role on the county executive. To achieve this role, Mr. Speaker, I have proposed an allocation of 3.25 billion to the county assembly for recurrent and development. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, allow me now to turn to the revenue raising measures and sustainability. Mr. Speaker, the financial year 2023-2024 financial year 2023-2024 budget estimates will be financed from both transfer from the national government and on source revenue. As highlighted earlier, the total resource projection for the financial year 2023-2024 stands at 42.3 billion, up from 39.6 billion in the previous financial year. The budget is balanced 
and therefore no borrowing is envisaged. Mr. Speaker, to ensure the county targets are met, the county treasury projects an income of 19.9 billion from internal sources and 22.5 billion from external sources. We remain hopeful that the diminished revenue due to the harsh economic period will be reversed in the coming financial year. In order to realize the projected on-source revenue, the government has established the County Revenue Authority amongst other revenue raising strategies. Mr. Speaker, for a long time, the county has lacked requisite legislation for key revenue streams. This weakened the administration and mobilization of revenue collection. In the coming year, the county government will be pursuing this agenda through the Revenue Authority to ensure that every revenue stream has an enabling legislation. And, within the, and with the help of this House, we expect better performance henceforth. We will also continue using the digital pay service platform for convenience and broadening of our revenue base. Mr. Speaker, the completion and capturing of geographical information system, GIS, based valuation role <clears throat> remains our key strategy to boost our rates collection. Land rates are currently charged based on the new valuation role of 2019. The number of rateable properties is expected to increase from the current 181,000 to approximately 241,000 properties. We will also introduce sectional properties rates targeting individual houses on a block of apartments. Cumulatively, this measure will increase rates income by approximately 1 billion shillings. Mr. Speaker, we intend to restructure the single business permit codes by introducing new parameters, that is hyper, mega, large, medium, small, and mini, for classification of business in order to enhance fairness and compliance. This will bring on board small traders who previously defaulted due to higher charges. We expect to collect an additional 1 billion shillings after implementation. Mr. Speaker, we will also be mapping revenue streams and setting targets for each stream, sub-county, ward, and individual. This will increase the revenue base, which will ultimately increase actual revenue and form a logical basis for setting targets. Mr. Speaker, I have proposed minor adjustments and new charges through the Finance Bill 2023. The key areas of interest are as follows. There are a few reductions and a few increments, Mr. Speaker. The reductions, reduction of originating and terminating charge, that is the seasonal tickets for public service vehicles, matatus, terminating outside the central business district uh, has been reduced uh, by reducing the current charge by 50%. This will enhance compliance by the PSVs who operate outside CBD with potential of increasing the collection by 500 million shillings. Review, we have reviewed and graduated the fire inspection certificates as per the sizes and activities in order to enhance compliance. The old charges were too high that led to many clients to seek the same services from neighboring counties that are charging lower fees. Number three, reduction of the annual licenses and permits for water bowsers and exhausters to enhance compliance. The old charges are also too high, resulting to non-compliance by many operators. This uh, reduction is expected to enhance the safety of water and a clean environment. And number four, uh, Mr. Speaker, we have reduced charges for complementary education institutions in informal settlements to allow as low as 3,000 shillings for small centers with less than 200 pupils payable in installments in line with the Nairobi City County Trade Licensing Act 2019 to recognize and encourage the services given to the vulnerable people in society. 
Mr. Speaker, a few uh, increments and new charges. Um, uh, restructuring of the single business permit codes by introducing new parameters. That Brief. is, uh, as mentioned, the hyper, mega, large, Brief. medium, Briefly. small, and mini. Briefly, CC Finance, kindly hold a bit. As earlier indicated and communicated by the Chair, Understanding Order 2323, that you shall be heard and interrupted. But we have got uh, the hours of the meeting, which I would request the majority leader to move a procedure of motion seeking extension of hours of the sitting. Majority leader, please. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. As you said, you should listen to the CC finance in silence, but nature calls, and you must respond to nature of time. That passed on to provision of standing order number 33A331. This assembly resolved to extend its sitting until the conclusion of the sweetest speech given by the CC for finance. I ask my counterpart to second. Uh, Honorable Speaker, I beg to, in the interest of time, to second and to reiterate the importance of the, of the document that is reading and the importance of the budget to the county. I second you. Thank you, Honorable Members. As a requirement under Standing Order 33.3a on the extension of hours of the meeting, I would really propose the extension of hours of debate, Honorable Members. Are we in agreement, the mover to reply? Yes. The motor mover kindly reply. This UD, oh sorry. Honorable Speaker, I beg to move. Thank you. Reply. Honorable members, I now put the question that understanding order 33.3a, the, the house stands to extend hours of meeting as agreed and resolved by the House. Honourable members, may as many of the similar opinions say ayes. Yes. May as many of the contrary opinions say nays. The ayes have it. Thank you. You have the field day up to midnight. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, thank you very much for your generosity. I intend to utilize the time you have given me until midnight. So, members, let's not be in any hurry. I was, Mr. Speaker, moving on to the increments and new charges. Restructuring of the single business permit codes by introducing new parameters, that is the hyper, mega, large, medium, small, and mini, for classification of businesses in order to enhance fairness, compliance, and revenues. The new parameters will be charged as follows. Hyper supermarket at 40,000, mega supermarket 30,000, large butchery shop or retail service at 4,000, kiosk 1,000, and all shops and retail services in Nairobi County owned markets at 2,000. Um, number six, Mr. Speaker, the introduction of new charges following the uh, improvement and installation of modern new facilities in the county hospitals and health facilities. The increase of existing charges to cover the cost of service delivery with direct impact on the quality of service given to the citizens. All the funds collected will be used to improve the, health, the county health facilities and put them at par with private health centers. Number seven, introduction of leasing out of county equipment and machinery under the mobility and works whenever they are not in use. The proposal would make full use of the county assets and staff and bring in revenue as opposed to having them lying idle in our yards. Number eight, introduction of environmental levy charge capped at 2% of the annual rates for all properties within Nairobi. The revenue will be used for improvement of our environment and making the city regain its glory as the green city in the sun. Number nine, increasing betting shops and pool table charges to control betting activities 
and enhance revenue. Number 10, regulation, regularization of unauthorized developments and imposition of penalties for the same. Number 11, review the planning charges and increase county revenues by inclusion of various advertisement forms that have not been captured in the previous Finance Act. Small increments in fees to encourage compliance as well as remove ambiguity and properly classify all advertisements to differentiate each type and category. For example, those ones on motorbikes, the three-wheelers, the mobile advertisements, and the street, street displays. Mr. Speaker, to boost the above-mentioned strategies, we will be creating awareness on all county levies for citizens to pay, how to pay, deadlines, and consequences of being in default. We shall also ensure prompt billing and serving of demand notices, combined with continuous inspection and enforcement to ensure compliance. We shall provide necessary tools to facilitate collection, inspection, and enforcement of revenue. As I conclude, Honorable Speaker, I cannot fail to reiterate that the county government remains focused and steadfast to ensuring that the development targets are met, consequently transforming the county into the glorious city in the sun, a competitive city globally, bringing order, dignity, hope, and opportunity for all to all Nairobians, with its people benefiting from a high quality of life. The budget-making process was consultative crafted on the backdrop of limited resources and trade-offs have been done to ensure that the county only pursues areas of optimal gains. This could not have been possible without the support of the office of His Excellency, the Governor, Sakaja Arthur Johnson, your office, Mr. Speaker, and that of the clerk of the county assembly. I thank you for having granted me the opportunity to present this budget highlights and also for the support this far received throughout this process. I am particularly grateful to the Finance, Budget and Appropriation Committee led by the very able Chairman, Honorable Daktari, Wilfred, Oluwach, Odalo, and all the other sectors and sectoral committees. Uh, I also want to specially recognize the leader of majority, the Honorable Peter Imwatok, the leader of minority, the Honorable Anthony Kiragu, and all the leadership and the committees and their, for their commitment to see this process end successfully. I cannot forget my fellow county executive committee members up in the gallery, county chief officers, and I remind you at this stage of what the chairman of budget said about your relationship with the leaders in here. I urge you to take it very seriously. <laughs> Staff at the county treasury, led by the indomitable county chief officer for finance and economic planning, <laughs> Asha Abdi, <laughs> whom I call my right-hand man. I don't know whether that is appropriate. <laughs> the chief officer for revenue, Bwana Wilson Gakuya, who have jointly and individually worked hard to ensure that the budget and all supporting documents met the legal timelines. I also recognize the one and only Martha Wambogo <laughs> and all the staff of the county treasury. To our friends in the media, we appreciate the role you play in educating and informing. And Nancy. Yeah. 
Finally, Mr. Speaker, I wish to thank Nairobians in general for their continued involvement in the county affairs through public participation, their unwavering fulfillment of their civic duty, which finances the county operations and pledge that as a county, we will focus on the priority areas they have helped us identify. Let's make Nairobi work. Thank you all, and God bless Nairobi City County. I did recognize the speaker, and I recognize him again. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker, for your continuing support. Mr. Speaker, allow me to submit the finance bill 2023 and the budget statement for the financial year 2023-2024 to this House for consideration. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable members, on adjournment of the Assembly, Honorable members, I wish to take this opportunity to thank the CC member for finance and economic planning, Mr. Charles Cater, for the effectively making a public pronouncement of the budget policy highlights and revenue ra raising measures for the County Government of Nairobi City County financial year 2023-2024. Honorable members, it is now my pleasure to invite all members, the CEC members, member for finance and economic planning, and all invited guests to a reception at Windsor Golf Hotel and County Club for cocktail party. Honorable members, the time being uh, five or four, the House now stands adjourned until Tuesday, 4th July 2023 at 2.30 p.m. <laughs>